Hello, hello. My name is Robert Adut with yaymath.org. This is called Yay Math in Studio. I'm in a beautiful space filled with hands holding hands, and it's very synonymous with my life. I'm reaching out to you. I'm trying to hold your hand and walk you through this crazy landscape called mathematics. And uh, I hope this partnership helps you. I hope you are learning a lot from these videos that I'm so happy to create for you. Today we're going to be talking about the remainder and factor theorems. It's, it's almost obvious once you get it. So that's my goal, okay? I'm going to walk you through this process to help you see what I see so that it's like, oh, oh, okay, oh. Sometimes when students say like, oh, you just do the blah, 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 and I tell them I love when students use the word just. It's like they just do X, Y, Z, so meaning they really get it. So let's get you to a place of just. So let's first break this polynomial down, all right? This is a quadratic with x squared. Let's factor it and we're gonna make a point. So if we factor this guy, this is x and x. Two numbers that multiply to negative five and add to four. Multiply to negative, add to positive. You multiply to a negative, one needs to be negative, one positive, that's for sure. And what multiplies to negative five and adds to positive four? That'll be positive five and one, okay? If we were going to solve this quadratic or solve the polynomial, we set y to zero, and basically it's where this parabola will hit the x-axis. When y is zero, it'll hit the x-axis. These x-intercepts are the solutions, x equals one, x equals negative five, all right? So here's the question, okay? Would there be a way for us to use division to prove that this is a solution, okay? I'm gonna give you a brief example. Suppose I gave you a number like 144, and I said, hey, you know, based on 144, I'm gonna give you a factor. I'm gonna give you something that can divide into 144 evenly. That's what a factor is, a number that can multiply to make 144. And I gave you that factor like 16, and I posed the question, what's the other factor? Well, if you're seeking that other factor, what would you do? How would you get the other factor if I said that 16 was a factor? Hopefully, instinctively, you're thinking, I would divide the big guy by the existing factor, and I would get the remaining factor. So I would do the big guy divided by 16 because I said it was a factor. It must divide evenly. It's 144 by 16, it happens to be nine. This is exactly the same, all right? This is exactly the same. If I had this situation here, this polynomial, x squared plus 4x minus 5, and I said x minus 1 is a factor because it can multiply to make x squared plus 4x minus 5, and x plus 5 is a factor because it can multiply to make x squared plus 4x minus 5. The question is, if you were given one factor, how would you get the other factor? Let's, let's play around with it. Supposing we didn't know what the factors were. Here they are, because in later clips we're not going to know. x squared plus 4x minus five. And I said, hey, check it out. I can give you a factor. One factor is x minus one. Cool. x minus one. How would you get the other factor? Pretending we didn't see this, right? I like putting, I like this method because we really see the mountaintop before we get there. It gives us hope. It lets us know it's really not so bad of a climb. But now let's do, 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 uh, pursue this hypothetical. This is one factor. Let's find the other. It's no different. We're going to divide the factor into the polynomial. I'm going to do that using synthetic division. Okay, synthetic division basically goes like this. We put the solution of this factor in the box. That is, if we set x minus 1 equals 0, the solution, just like we have here, plus 1 on both sides, x equals 1. So that 1 goes in the box. And then we put the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, in order here. Uh, trying to keep, keep track of if there's any zeros for x, like if it was um, x squared minus 5, we would have to do 1, 0, negative 5. The zero placeholders are called. That would be in place of the x if there's no x here. But for the time being, we have no skips. x squared, then we have 4x, then we have minus 5, so we put the coefficients down, 1, 4, and negative 5. Will this divide evenly is the question. 
Will x minus 1 divide evenly? And hopefully you believe that the answer is yes, because I offered that x minus 1 is a factor. So if x minus 1 is a factor, just as 16 is a factor of 144, it would have to divide evenly. So we're going to divide this into there. If something divides evenly into a term, what would the remainder be when you know something divides evenly? Hopefully you know that the remainder would have to be 0. Here it comes. 1. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. 1 times 1 is 1. Put that here. Add down. 4 plus 1 is 5. Multiply. That's 5. Add down. 0. This is the remainder. Of course, the remainder is 0 when something divides evenly. And here we have the remaining factor, right? When we divide 16 into 144, that result is 9, the remaining factor. When we divide x minus 1 into x squared plus 4x minus 5, we get the remaining factor here in coefficients. This is the remainder. This is the constant. This is the single x term. And then maybe another x squared. If we had more terms, it would just ascend. It would go up. But we only have two terms. So we get x positive 5 right here. It's kind of cool. One more thing to talk about here is the following. What is, what is, let's take off our 16 and 144. Forget about that. F of 1. F of 1 means evaluate the function when x is 1. When x is 1, that would mean this x is 1, and we plug in 1 here and here. Let's see what it is, because we, we know how to evaluate f of anything by simply plugging in. You just plug 1 into x, as a student would say. Let's just plug in 1 to x. So we'll put that here, plus 4, use a little color. Okay. Let's take this off. Actually, I need this here. Let's keep that alive. Take this. It's a whole choreography, isn't it? Throw the ones in here, here, and here. So now we're plugging in 1 for x, and we get f of 1 equals 1 squared is 1 plus 4 minus 5 equals 5 minus 5 is 0. f of 1 equals 0. And that's to be expected because we notice that the function evaluates to 0 when x is 1. The function becomes 0 when x is 1. If you look closely, that leads us to an amazing conclusion. Okay? We could calculate f of 1 by simply plugging in 1 here and here, or f of 2 or f of 9 by plugging in 2 or 9 here into x. Or we could calculate f of anything by using synthetic division and observing the remainder. If we synthetically divide 1 in, we'll get that 0 that we look for, for f of 1, right here in the remainder. That's called synthetic substitution. That's what this is called. You can solve for f of anything using synthetic division and observing the remainder. Let's do an example. Let's do one that's not a solution, not 1 or not negative 5. Let's do like something fun, like 7. 7 could be cool. Let's solve for f of 7 in both ways. f of 7 by plugging in x is 7 and synthetic substitution, observing the remainder and seeing we get the same thing. Here we go. So, yeah, we can leave this, use that, that'll help us. Bop, bop, bop. All that. Okay, first the old school way, f of 7. Bam, bam. Bam. All right, here we go. f of 7 equals f of 7 equals. This is, okay, oh, <laughs> I got myself in trouble here. Here we go. Let's roll up my sleeves if I had any. This is uh, 49 plus 28 minus 5. 49 plus 28. See, I'm not afraid to make mistakes, homeboys and girls. 49 plus 28, that's uh, 60 plus 17 is uh, 77. Yeah, 77 minus 5 is 72. Oh, I wish there was another way to solve for f of 7. Oh, but there is. It's called synthetic substitution. Rock and roll.
So we simply divide synthetically with the solution in this case for x. The solution for x, the value for x is 7. 7 goes in the box. It's my 7 in a box. <laughs> 1, 4, negative 5 for the Timberlake fans out there. And we go. 1, multiply, 7. And we get uh, 28. 7 times 28 is doing it. Boom. Fear not the multiplication. This is 6, 5. This is, uh, whoa, what's going on? What am I doing? What am I doing? This should work. 7, synthetic substitution. Okay, let's stick with it. This is 2 times that. That's 100. That's 14. Plus 5 is 196. Okay. 196. What am I doing wrong? Something's up. 7. Let's see if I can uncover the mist array. 49 plus 28. Synthetic substitution. Did I miss anything? 1. Multi add. Add. There, I found it. I found it. I got to add down, not multiply. I knew it. See, something was wrong. That's what I love about math because there's no fooling it. There's no faking it. It should work from multiple angles. I always like to say there's multiple paths to the mountaintop. It's kind of cool to, to go through the challenge of discovering my own mistake. And I hope I modeled that for you. It's like, what's going on? It should result in 72. As far as we know, this is clearly not going to be 172 or excuse me, 72 when you add down need to add down, not multiply down. All right, that's synthetic division. Let's take this off, off. Probably because I'm excited. Okay, add down. This is 11, 77, 72. Awesome. So then we get F of 7 equals 72. Synthetic substitution, it's called. I hope that made sense. I hope you see that the remainder of synthetic division is the solution for f of 7, just like the remainder is 0 when you actually synthetically divide one of the solutions. Because it's a factor, it'll divide evenly. If something divides evenly, the remainder will be 0. And therefore, we notice that that remainder is actually the solution for dividing anything as a result. Uh, I hope that made sense. I hope you just need to divide 7 in or any number to get f of 7 or f of 10 or anything you want. Observe the remainder and uh, you'll be able to solve for that answer. Thank you again for watching. This is yaymath.org, yaymath in studio. You hold hands, holding your hand. Okay, felt the love. Bye.